Hello and welcome to episode 15 of Rabbit Hole Reviews. We're going to take a uh, quick look at an interesting pistol. Well, at least in my mind, it's an interesting pistol. So what is this? This is an FEG SMC 918. So FEG, as some of you may already know, as a, as a Hungarian arms manufacturer, or at least they were an arms manufacturer. Currently, um, they primarily focus on HVAC. They're like a Hungarian conglomerate of companies. Um, they do everything but firearms manufacturing at this point. So they ceased firearms production roughly in the mid-2000s. Uh, they were, made all sorts of interesting small arms. Um, I'm sad to see that they're out of the firearms business, honestly. I'm sure that their HVAC products are interesting, but not nearly as interesting as their firearms. So this gun... Um, what do you want to what do you want to really take away from this video? Well, it is the world's smallest pistol chambered in the cartridge 9x18 Makara. And that's where that name comes from. So it's SMC 918. Not very creative, but it's 918 indicates the caliber it's chambered for. And it is very small, uh, which we're going to find out here in a second. Uh, it's a 6 plus 1 capacity magazine. Um, normally, pistols of this class, you see seven or eight round capacities, but the pistol grip is very short. We'll go ahead and take a look at that now. A very well-made gun, and not not a lightweight by any means. It's just, this is such, such a classy gun. Would I carry this? No. Um, we'll get into that towards the end, but no, this is not a carry piece. If you look, with, uh, well, we'll put the magazine back in first. Here it is loaded with its six rounds in the magazine. And even with the the pinky rest on the magazine, the thumb or the, the finger rest, I'm not getting any grip. Uh, it's just not going to happen. Now, of course, that gets worse once you take the magazine out. You're not going to be firing it like this without a magazine in there, but it just gives you an idea of how small this gun is. It's very sleek, um, very trim. Uh, the frame is a an aluminum titanium alloy so that's interesting right uh, they took the time to do an aluminum titanium alloy in a, in a pistol of this class uh, it's very walther like the way it breaks down is identical um, the sights not a whole lot going on here with the sights they're pretty vague they're pretty hard to pick up um, could you swap these out uh, yeah, you could swap out the rear. The rear is dovetailed, but really this is a, a point and shoot gun. This is a very close range firearm. Uh, you've got six plus one rounds to make it count. I mean, in my view, you'd almost be better off with a revolver. Um, the only benefit you get over a revolver, uh, you know, or this over a revolver is the, is a rapid reload. That's about it. Um, but that being said, it's a very well made handgun. Um, it feels every bit as good as a Walther. Uh, I don't know if that's even a compliment in 2022. Some of Walther's stuff is a little sketchy, but uh, it's just so nice. Um, and it's not bad. You would think that being the smallest nine by 18 Makarov chambered pistol in the world, that it would be kind of a handful to shoot. And it, to me, it's okay. I like shooting this more than I like shooting the Polish P64 also chambered in nine by 18 Makarov, which uh, I'm going to do a review on shortly. Uh, that gun is, is kind of a beast to shoot. This doesn't feel as bad. I don't know if it's the shape of the pistol grip or what's going on. I'm going to have to go back and do a head-to-head -head and do a comparison because I didn't shoot them on the same day, or at least I haven't in the past. But uh, let's go ahead and uh, take a look at some of the specs. The, um, of course, the caliber, which I've gone over, is 9 by 18 Makarov. The published weights are... 19, just over 19 ounces empty and 21.16 ounces loaded. So we're going to put that to the test here in a little bit. The, the research that I did showed a production run of roughly 3,800 pistols. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's slightly more than that. But given the fact that this gun was built by request to be imported into the United States back in the 1980s, I could see it being a limited run that FEG made because as far as I know, no one else has adopted these or used these. This is strictly uh, by request 
I'm going to assume by KBI because KBI was the importer for these uh, to have a limited run of these. I don't, I don't know the full history on that. That's some pretty obscure information that I couldn't dig up. Uh, if anyone in the comments has any more information on how these came to be, uh, but I have a production run of roughly 3,800 plus uh, pistols. Production run running from 1986 to the year 2000, uh, which stands about right because I think about 2004 FEG was completely out of the firearms business. So you're not going to see anything built after that period for sure. Um, the pistol's six and a half inches long and has a 3.4 inch barrel. So, you know. It's not going to have much bigger than that because it is it is indeed the smallest pistol chambered in this caliber. It has the goofy thumb rest grip uh, required for importation reasons. Uh, I don't know if you can put some uh, grips. Maybe I think, well, I don't think the APK9 grips are going to fit. Um, don't quote me on that. They might. Uh, I'm going to have an APK9 pistol for review shortly. That's in 380 caliber. So they may actually uh, be able to be swapped out if you don't like the thumb rest. Uh, I don't really have a problem with the thumb rest grips. I mean, if, it, if anything, it gives you a little bit more to hold on to. Um, just a really well-made gun. Uh, this review is definitely not going to be 20 minutes because, uh, you know, this is not a gun that I really want to... We're not going to talk about it in terms of, of a carry piece or a bedside gun. I would say a hard pass on either one of those. Uh, options. Uh, this would just not fill the bill for me. Of course, you know, yeah, everyone's needs and requirements and preferences are different. This is strictly a collectible item. I bought it because the price was right. Um, it is a unique handgun and the fact that it is the smallest pistol in the world chambered in this caliber. Uh, things like a, an aluminum or titanium aluminum alloy frame and, and just the overall fit and finish of FEG guns is quite nice. Uh, and this one's no exception. We'll go ahead and put it on the scale, and then we're going to do some trigger pulls. And that should wrap this one up. This is a short overview. I'm probably going to have this one at the range, and I'll take it out and do some shooting at a, in a later video. Let's see what we're working with. Let's switch it to ounces. All right, so 16.72, and that's because the published weight of 19.04 uh, is with an empty magazine, and I don't have an empty magazine uh, during this video. The magazine I have is actually loaded, um, so I could uh, do the loaded weight test, which is really the, the number that we all care about, right? So we'll go ahead and uh, see what it is loaded. I mean, I guess you could carry this six plus one to give you seven. That would probably be the way to do it. Load a round, decock the hammer, go back, put another round in the magazine. Let's see what. Uh... All right, so I'm coming up with 20.32 ounces versus the published weight of 21.16 ounce. So it's a little... Eh, it's, I mean, it's just under an ounce difference in weight. I don't know if uh, the ammunition I'm using is different. Uh, for test, this is uh, some of that Norinco full metal jacket, 9 by 18 Maybe the grain weight's slightly different. I'm assuming it's roughly a 95 grain bullet, but that's really not that important. Uh, so that gives you an idea of what the carry weight's going to be if you happen to carry this. You could do it. I think there are better options out there. Uh, not that it's not reliable, and it's actually fairly accurate. You know, this is a short-range gun. Uh, I didn't shoot this past seven yards, so I really can't speak to what the accuracy is past that point. Um, but I just don't think you're really, you know, just the philosophy of use on a gun like this. This is up close and personal. Um, and, you know, it's 1980s technology, so you're not dealing with the polymer. Would a, would a Ruger LCP probably fit the bill better than this? You know, that's just one pistol that happened to come to mind while I'm shooting this video. Probably. Um, and they're roughly the same price. These are not inexpensive. Um, the big thing about these is that you're not going to find them 
on a daily basis. They're just not out there. They didn't have a large production run of them. If you can find a nice clean one, I would say pick it up. Uh, if you're uh, an aficionado of little pocket pistols like these, and I always like something different and something that you don't see every day. And this definitely checks the box as a collectible. As a practical firearm, I think it's just a range toy. It's something that I could just pull out and say, hey, have you seen the smallest production pistol chambered to 9 by 18 Makarov? Well, if the answer is no, I happen to have an option for you. So it's really just a, com it's a conversation piece to me. Uh, yes, you could defend your life with it, but would you? Uh, not given all the options that you have out there. So we'll wrap it up with some trigger pulls. I just wanted to show this little pistol to y'all because it's just, it's just so odd and so unique. Very well made. Weapon is clear. Everything fits smoothly. The bluing is nice and rich. Um, just, it's a joy. This gun, it really is a joy just to pick up. And I hate to say it, but this gives Walther a run for its money in terms of its overall fit and finish. I've had blued Walthers that weren't this nice. All right, so 8.2 pounds. I don't even know what the double action pull is going to be. Probably heavy. All right, 8.2 pounds again. Let's try this a third time. Trigger pull is actually very nice. 7.4 pounds. Let's do a double action. I might have to hang on to this pistol for this one. It's probably going to be a little stout. Breaks down just like a Walther by pulling the trigger guard down and out. It's a fixed barrel, fixed barrel design like all these pistols. Wow, 19.2 pounds. I'm not really that surprised by that number, honestly. I mean, it, it is a smooth 19.6 again. It is a smooth 19 pounds. I know that sounds ridiculous, but it really doesn't feel that bad. All right, 15.6. We're going to keep doing this. Sixteen pounds. I'm going to keep getting different readings. 15.6. This is what you get when you take a, shoot a video in one take with no editing. A lot of blooper reels, right? 15 pounds. We're going to keep doing the double action. I guess we're going to ignore that 19 pound trigger pulls that we first got because the actual weight's in the 15 pound range. We'll do one more just to be thorough. All right, so that was 13.8. Let's just say the double action's around the 15 pound mark. It really doesn't feel that bad. I'm surprised at how good the trigger is for a gun like this. Uh, I mean, I'm not going to say that my expectations were low going in. And I bought this gun without having any prior knowledge of it. You know, I just bought it a, at an auction as a curiosity item. You know, seeing something this small, chambered a 9x18 Makarov, and of course, its big selling point is, you know, hi, look at me. This is the smallest Makarov chambered pistol in the world. So that's all I really have on this one. Uh, we're going to have a bunch of other pocket pistols coming up on the channel. Um, there's lots of stuff that's going to be covered. And now that I have some new tech online, um, we're going to do some live action shooting. But uh, the channel is progressing quite nicely. And for those of you that have commented, I appreciate it. I try to be engaged in the comment section. Um, I see a lot of activity and uh, it's moving forward. So stay tuned for episode 16. I haven't decided what that's going to be yet, but you're going to see that in a couple days.